Right, so far we have dealt with normal functions. We have now dealt with parametric functions, and now we actually will be looking at polar coordinates. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to convert rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates and polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates. Before you can convert, though, we really need to know what does a polar graph look like and what are the coordinates. So if you look at the polar coordinate system that says r theta, r is the directed distance from O to P, and theta is a directed angle counterclockwise from pole of the polar axis to segment OP. So what on earth is that talking about? If you have a graph, and let's say I have this point right here, in rectangular coordinates, we would probably describe it as 4, 5, or 2, 3, or something like that. So the polar coordinate system is just another way of describing this point, just as um, parametric equations were another way of describing a point. What this is going to do is in a polar coordinate system, we will describe that point by telling the radius from 0, 0, so that distance from the point, from 0, 0 to that point, so from O to P, and then we'll also be telling what angle theta that line connecting the point to the origin makes with the x-axis, or from the polar axis, whatever. So that's when I'm describing this. It's some radius r and some um, directed angle theta. So that's what we're talking about with polar coordinates. One thing that you'll notice with the polar graph, um, just as one example, if I said, if I wanted to graph something that looked like r equals 6, we would basically looking at all points that have a radius of 6 from the center. So actually, a circle would be represented by r equals 6 because all of these points on the circle have a radius of 6 from the origin. So just a little bit different way of looking at graphs. All right, with rectangular coordinates, each point x, y has a unique representation. If you say to graph that, we know exactly where to go. There's only one way to describe it. This is not true with polar coordinates. As an example, r of theta would describe the point, r of 2 pi plus theta all represent the same point, and negative r theta plus pi represent that point. So as an example, let's say I have the polar coordinate 5 and pi over 4. Okay, what that would look like, we would go pi over 4 degrees, which is going to be smack dab in between the x-axis and the y-axis, and then it would have a radius of 5. So that would describe that point. But this is just saying there are, are many other ways that we could describe that point. I could describe this point as 5, and if I added 2, 2 pi over 4, that would be 9 fourths pi. So 9 fourths pi would mean start at the origin, start at the x-axis, go all the way around, which would be 8 pi over 4, and then go another pi over 4, which would bring us right to that same spot. So that's another way to describe the point. And a third way that I could describe the point would be negative 5, so change the radius. And this time we're going to go theta plus pi. So pi over 4 plus pi would be 5 fourths pi. So for this one, what we would be doing is we would be going to the left 5 and then going pi, 5 pi over 4 degrees. So we'd go pi degrees and another, another pi over 4 degrees. And once again, we'd end up at that same point. So all I'm trying to do is show you that there are many ways to describe that point. All right, now we're going to be going from polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar. The way that this came into play, I'm just going to show you where these conversions come from. If I had uh, rectangular coordinates, this would be the x-axis and this would be the y-axis up here, I suppose. Um, in normal rectangular coordinates, this is r right now, in rectangular coordinates this would be some distance x and some distance up y. All right, so if I were to use SOHCAHTOA to describe this to get um, the <coughs> x value that would be cosine, so I'd put cosine theta equals x over r, and then solving that for x, I'd get x equals r cosine theta. So that's where that formula came from. And then to get the y value, we would use sine, so I'd put sine of theta equals y over r, and then once again, just cross multiplying to find y, we'd get y equals r sine theta. So that's where if we have something that's in polar, we can easily change it to rectangular coordinates. All right, and then if we're going polar to rectangular, um, you'll notice that this says tangent of theta equals y over x. Well, if you look at this 
triangle, excuse me, the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. If I would like to solve that for theta, because if we have something in y and x coordinates, we want the theta value, what we would do, if you recall, we'll do the inverse tangent of y over x. And that's how we would find the theta. And then this, if we have this r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, that's just based on the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I solve this for r, r is going to equal plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then if you look at this note, it says to use the positive square root of x squared plus y squared for r if x is greater than 0, and we'll use the negative square root if x is less than or equal to 0. So that will help us decide um, if my r is positive or negative. All right, so let's try some examples. It says to convert the following to rectangular coordinates. So first of all, my r is 2 and my theta is pi. So if I would like to convert it to rectangular coordinates, we're just going to remember that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta, just simple as that. So x equals 2 cosine, oh, cosine pi and y is equal to 2 sine pi. And then we just need to remember that the cosine of pi is negative 1, and so my x value will be negative 2, and then the sine of pi is equal to 0, so my y value will be 0. So 2 pi in rectangular coordinates would be negative 2, 0. And if you can think about that, if we were to graph that, negative 2, 0 is right there. And on this one, if I go out at 2 units, and then I went pi degrees, or pi radians, that would bring me right over there to there as well. So just two different ways of representing that same point. All right, the second one, we have the square root of 3 and then pi over 6. So again, this is my r and this is my theta. So x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. So the cosine of pi over 6, I'm going to get out my hand right now. Let's see, pi over 6, 0. Pi over 6, pi over 6 is right here, so the cosine is what's up top, so that will be the square root of 3 over 2. So this is the square root of 3 over 2, so I'm going to have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 over 2. Well, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3, so x is going to equal 3 halves. Right? And then the sine of pi over 6, same thing if I'm looking at my hand right here. Pi over 6 is right here, the sine is what's on the bottom, which is going to be 1 half. So I'm going to get the square root of 3 times 1 half, which will equal the square root of 3 over 2. So my coordinates for this one would be 3 halves square root 3 over 2. All right, now let's go the other way. Let's convert the following rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. And if we just keep in mind that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x, and then r was equal to plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. So this is my x, this is my y. So theta will just equal the inverse tangent of y over x, in this case that would be 1 over negative 1. So we're looking for theta to be the inverse tangent of negative 1. So we're looking for where does the tangent equal negative 1, and we can use our calculator on this one, although we could probably just as easily not. We will get theta is equal to negative 0.785 when we were to, would to, were to type that into our calculator. Okay, and then to get the r value, r is going to be it does say plus or minus, but since the x value is less than 0, we will use the negative of that. So this will be x squared plus y squared, and that will give me negative 1 plus 1, which is negative the square root of 2. So, um, actually, all right, so... Yes, if we wanted to do this, would actually be negative pi over 4. If we wanted it exact, just FYI. All right, so my radius is negative square root 2, and then my value is either negative pi over 4, or we could write it as negative square root 2, negative 0.785. Either one would be fine for me on this one. Alrighty, so the next one we have 2, negative 5, and that would be great if you paused the video and tried this one on your own and then came back and see how you did. All right, we've got theta is equal to, <coughs> excuse me, y over x. <clears throat> excuse me, the inverse tangent of y over x. And then when we do that, we definitely will have to use our calculator on this one. This should be negative 5 halves because it was negative y over, it was y for x, which is negative 5 over 2. So anyway, theta should give me to three places negative 1.190. And then we're going to have r is equal to, since x is greater than 0, it will be the positive square root. So the positive square root of x 
squared plus y squared, which will give me 25 the square root of 29. And if we wanted to put that to three places, which we could, I think I'll just leave it as a square root, my polar coordinates for this point would be um, 5.385 comma negative 1.190. And obviously there's more than one way to represent that as we had seen before. So hopefully now you can convert rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates and polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates.